But somehow you both look the same age there. Mm. I mean, you know, there, there's something <laughs> to be said for being with a younger man. They, he, he, I, I, I suck uh, baby's blood. <laughs> and put it on my face. You already know what it is. It's your boy laid back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, TikTok, you up to bat. It's your boy laid back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we got to do. You got to hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the like button. The notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. We back with another reaction, man. We got some conspiracy stuff going on. We got some true crime stuff going on. We got some stuff going on in this one. Make sure you do your own research. Make sure you do your own research. Also, I got a TikTok playlist. If you into this type of stuff, you can go through and binge watch it when you get some time. If you're just chilling at the crib, if you're driving a truck, if you're at work, whatever it is. But you make it to the end of this one, you're a real one for real, man. Shout out to my real ones for real. But let's go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad was popping. Let's get it. Photo is the reason you shouldn't put your feet up on the dashboard of a car. Mm. In 2007, Granny Keeley had an airbag deploy on her at 120 miles an hour. Whoa. She was sitting passenger with her feet up on the dash, and when the airbag went off, her knees went right into her skull. Jeez. Obviously, this led to a brain injury. Her two front teeth also fell out, but she lived, thankfully. She lived without a forehead for about two years until surgeons fitted a ceramic forehead into her skull. Wow. She had near constant headaches and she developed gallstones because of the medication she was on. After they fitted a ceramic plate into her forehead, they injected fat from her stomach into it so it could look more natural. This is her today, so she looks very normal now. Right. And of course, because she's in good spirit, she says her ceramic forehead is designer because it was made in Italy. She also spent a considerable amount of time educating people on why they shouldn't put their feet up on the dashboard. Because if you do, you could end up like this. And you might not be so lucky. So if you get anything from this video, stop putting your feet up on the dash. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. And as always, these videos are for informational and entertainment purposes only. That's a wild look. This girl, she, I think she ran away from home. What is that shit called again? Uh, hitchhiking? Mm -hmm. And she ended up getting like some guy that was like driving a truck. And so they're driving, driving, driving. She thinks bruh is pretty cool. The dude like tries to like touch her face or something like that because I think like there was something on her eye or mm -hmm. something. You got an eyelash, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess she was like, what the fuck? It freaked her out. The rest of the ride is cool because she falls asleep. Mm. He, they get to like a gas station or something. Put something inside of like a water bottle, some type of pill. I think he oh, already had it on him or some shit. It. She wakes up. He tells her, he's like, put your arms out. She puts her arms out, bruh. He starts hacking at her arms, bro. Whoa. I swear to God, on some what? weird shit. I don't even know why he does this. Chops her arms off, bro. What? And what then he the kicks her down a ditch to leaves her there to die. With no arms. With no arms, bro. I swear to God. He's thinking she's dead. Yeah. He cuts out. He's like, I already did what I wanted to do. I'm out of here. She goes. That's it? It's a moment in court that shocked everyone. The sister of a slain 13-year-old cheerleader dropping heart-shaped stones into a glass. One after another, the glass fills up until she reaches the number 114. This jar now holds 114 stones, one for each of the 114 stab wounds Whoa. that my sister had to endure. Tristan Whoa. Bailey, last seen wearing her cheerleader uniform, went missing on Mother's Day two years ago in Jacksonville, Florida. Whoa. This surveillance video shows her at 1.15 a.m. She's walking with a 14-year-old classmate, Aiden Fucci. When police picked up Fucci for questioning, he posted this truly disturbing photo of himself in the back of a police car, giving the V sign with the caption, Hey guys, has anybody seen Tristan lately? He also wow. posted a Snapchat video. Having fun. During his police interrogation, Fucci's parents scolded him for posting on social media. Uh, the Snapchat you did was not very smart. Not a Snapchat thing you did. It's all over, you're all over the internet everywhere. Tristan's body was discovered in a secluded wooded area. She had been stabbed 114 times. Jeez. Fucci pleaded guilty to first degree murder. At his sentencing hearing, each of Tristan's siblings 
and her parents all dropped stones into the jar. So impactful, wow. it just absolutely stopped everybody. Complete quiet in court. Fuji presented this handwritten apology. I'm sorry for all the pain I caused the Bailey family. I know my apology will not fix anything or bring her back. That didn't sway the judge, who sentenced Fuji to the maximum penalty allowable under Florida law. There is only one appropriate sentence in this case. I sentence you to life in prison. Facts, bro. What are you doing? What are you doing? Even see Does no she drugs. have any more drugs? Huh? Does she have any more drugs? Watch this. If I tell you where the, the rest of the drugs that you gonna let me out the yes. sink, No. You gonna let me? You gonna let me go? Yeah. No. No. Come here. Do not trust him, you stupid bitch. No, for real, she got. She got more drugs. I got the twenty pills. If you help me with her, I cut you loose. Swear to God, I promise. But it ain't her. Huh? Who it is it? It ain't her. Who is it? Red. You gonna cut me loose? I got you loose, yeah. You got to keep the car too? Huh? I get to keep the car, you stick on to the car. No, you can keep the car. What I, what, what am I getting? This real? A lot of drugs? drugs? A lot of drugs? Yeah. Okay, how much? I don't know, but they in her wig. Huh? Her they wig. Wig. They in her wig? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna cut you loose if that's true. Okay. All right. This What's, is fake. <laughs> what you doing? Put your hands behind your back. What's up? Put your hands behind your back. Bro, what are you doing? This Where'd you get fake. this? Oh, yeah. I just said it what did I you do? Got cops? What? Y'all see that nigga here harassing me? Yeah, this is fake. Three, why well, ain't the douchey? 418. It's black history, man. What the fuck? <laughs> I ain't even do nothing. Yeah? Well, look, what this is going in the history books, ain't it? Yo! Oh. That's what I do. 420, 418. Stop. Bro, wait, you lifting my wig oh, off? Do not take my wig off. Do not take my wig off. Stop it. Dog. Oh, I'm not. Bro, do not take my wig off. Now you really tripping. You taking my wig off. Okay, hold on. Hold on. No, you trying to take my wig off. I'm going to let my head down with it. Stop, for real. I got to take it off. You get a little bit more crack in there. A little bit more crack? Good fucking ice, bro. Bro, you taking oh my, my wig god, off. Oh my god, there's more. It's fucking deep. <laughs> you tripping. That's okay. not even mine. <laughs> okay, well then no. <laughs> the girl who did my hair probably put it in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm sure she put all <laughs> that shit in there. She probably put did. Put all that bro. shit in there. She probably did put that man. shit in there, dog. That's man. fake. That gotta be fake, man. Stop. It's believed that this man died after hiding in toilet pipes to spy on schoolgirls. It was 1989 what? in the small village of Miyakoji in Japan. What would happen at a school that year would haunt pupils forever. It was the 28th of February and school teacher Yumi Tanaka was about to make a terrifying discovery. At around 5pm that day, just before heading home, she popped to the toilet. When she entered the cubicle, she noticed something that she had never seen before. In the toilet bowl was a black shoe. Now the way that the what? toilets worked back then was that the individual toilets were connected to a small sewer tank. Confused about where the shoe had come from, she actually went to investigate and peep into the sewer tank. What she found scarred her for life. Inside the tank was a pair of human feet. What? Upon the discovery, she screamed and her colleagues came to help her. Police turned up and found that the feet were actually connected to a full body in the tank. They tried to remove the human from the pipe, but it was incredibly hard. The fire service and a crane had to come and assist, and eventually wow. the body was pulled out. The person inside was a deceased male. He was obviously at this point covered in feces, and his cause of death was found to be hypothermia. The mm. man was identified finally as 26-year-old Naoyuki Kano. It was determined that he had been deceased for a couple of days, and it seemed like he'd voluntarily got into the toilet pipes. They concluded that he had squeezed himself in in a likely attempt to peer up and spy on women using the toilet. Mm -hmm. What in the world?
is going on. Did you know that Mr. Beast's girlfriend just exposed him? Her name is Thea, and she revealed a couple of weird things about Mr. Beast that might actually blow your mind. She said that on a first date with Mr. Beast, he was too curious about her. But later she revealed that Mr. Beast actually was asking her 40 different questions to spot if she was a gold digger. Little did I know he was actually like going off a list. Also, she revealed that Jimmy had a giant food bank near his studio because when Jimmy had more than 100 contestants for a video, he needs to feed them somehow. And it was a complete secret until today. And he's like, oh yeah, that's that's my food bank. Also, turns out Mr. Beast absolutely hates going on a normal dates. And when Thea and Mr. Beast just started dating, they have been just reading books and doing IQ tests together. And the final thing she revealed that Mr. Beast called their cat Satan because this cat scared them to death when they were walking outside one night with Mr. Beast. That's exposing him to get a food bank to feed people. So this 13 year old girl from Pennsylvania took her mother's life because she took her phone away from her. What? She used a knife and then when she was done, she threw the knife on the neighbor's porch. She also harmed her little brother, although the wounds were non-life-threatening. But get this, when the police got there, they found padlocks on the cabinets and the drawers. One of the padlocks had been broken and was laying on the floor. So what that sound like to you? It sounded like there was already an issue. They felt the need, well, the mom felt the need to hide knives from the daughter. Mm. And she figured out a way to get in the drawers anyway. Now, when she was arrested, she did seem to show some remorse. She said she don't know how people could do stuff like this and not feel bad about it. She said, I unalive my mother and she'll never forgive me if she is alive. It was also what? said that she told reporters that she feel disgusted, guilt, and regret. However, I think she's just trying to show remorse in front of those cameras for trial and court later. I wonder what's the rest of the story because for some reason, Mama had everything locked up. It's way deeper than this. I agree with that. Definitely more to the story. This woman created such disturbing videos that she was sentenced to 50 years in prison. Fifth. This story is truly one of the worst things that I've ever covered here on TikTok. So if you have a weak stomach or you can't hear about animal cruelty, please keep scrolling. So this is Ashley Richards from Houston, Texas. In 2015, she pleaded guilty to four counts of producing and one count of distributing these disturbing videos. And once again, I'm gonna warn you, you can keep scrolling at any time before we get into these details. So this all started in 2012 when PETA, or the group known as People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, contacted the Houston police about a video they had found online. This film was titled Ebony Kill Cat, and it depicted extremely sadistic and cruel acts being forced upon a kitten. So the police got into contact with the people from PETA and they then sent them 20 additional videos. These videos depicted the sadistic torture of various animals, including kittens, a fish, pigeon, crayfish, mice, a rabbit, all being tortured with different things like high heels, knives, wow. screwdrivers, and pliers. In the videos, the woman that appeared in them was wearing a Mardi Gras style mask and she would talk suggestively to the people watching this torture. Yes, that meant that they were paying customers out there that were paying this woman to produce these absolutely horrific videos. What? I cannot share the details of some of these videos. You can actually find the information online through news articles. But I mean, I'm, I literally, I think I changed as a person after reading these articles. Eventually though, the police were able to track Ashley's IP address, which led them to her suburban home in Houston. This is an example of one of the messages she shared with the client. I mean, just, ugh. That led them to Brent Justice and Ashley Richards. These were the two that were producing these videos and selling them on a website online. And Congress had recently passed a bill making this specific type of video material, otherwise known as crush, uh, illegal. So thankfully they were arrested. Shockingly though, Brent Justice, after the trial, he was actually sentenced to 50 years in prison. Shockingly though, Ashley, the woman who actually carried out these acts on camera was only sentenced to 10 years in prison. What? Now, personally, this is one of the most disturbing things I've ever read about, and I definitely think she should have been in prison for a lot longer, but that's the justice system. Wow, she got 10, he got 50? It took 35 years to identify her, but they still do not know who did it. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of the Bozier Jane Doe. Viewer discretion is advised. This is a man named John Cheston Sr. 
On January 28, 1981, he decided to take his two young sons hunting for the very first time in Bossier Parish, Louisiana. When they got to this exact area, he directed his two sons, who again had never been hunting before, to go to this like brushy area while he waited by his truck. Moments later, the two young boys come screaming back because they said they found a body. So the three of them Whoa. got into the truck and they booked it to the nearest police station where they reported the, the body. These clay recreations always terrify me. But when police arrived, they found the young woman's body. She was probably a late teenager, maybe early 20s. She had been stabbed eight times, and the coroner would later determine she had been dead for likely a month. Mm. The knife was actually found next to her body. Wow. However, to my knowledge, no fingerprints were ever found on it. She was wearing this pair of shoes and a pair of pants with this unique belt buckle. The grandmother of this teenage girl, Carol Ann Cole, had been in contact with Louisiana police because her granddaughter had been missing for some time. Mm. And it was believed that she was in Louisiana when she went missing. Once the body was discovered, the grandmother was like, can we determine if that's Carol? But the police at the time reassured her for whatever reason that it wasn't her. Later, they would come up with this clay figure of the victim, but it yielded no tips. And the case went cold for 35 years. Wow. A new detective working on the case decided to start a Facebook page to help identify this woman. And eventually it would lead back to the grandmother of that teenage girl. So then they were able to do the genealogical DNA testing and comparing to her family. And it was a match. The mm. body, in fact, was that of Carol Ann Cole. She was 17 years old. Originally wow. from Kalamazoo, Michigan, she was living with her grandmother when then she decided to move in with her mother in Texas. She got involved in alcohol and illegal substances, which ended up getting her put into a drug abuse program, which she then ran away from, and she mm. ran away from Texas. But when she did so, she kept calling her family to say where she was, which is how the grandma knew she was in the Louisiana area. But then suddenly she stopped calling, and then the body showed up. Mm. Now at one point, God damn it, get out of here, you! Shoot! looking like a zebra's disease taint. Yeah, at one point he confessed, but then obviously he's him, so it wasn't true. The main suspect they what? had, however, was this guy. Remember him? John Chesson Sr., who made his two young boys specifically go to an area where they found a body. So by 2015, his wife had already died. One of the sons who was with him that day ended his own life, and he himself mm. would die by 2016. Now, in 2015, just before he died, the detective was able to interview him, and guess where he was? In prison. For what? For murder. Wow. He denied having anything to do, however, with the murder of Carol Ann Cole. Wow. But his daughter would say otherwise. His daughter would recall that after seeing her actual image, that there was a young girl who was brought to their house by her father. She was there for like a day or two, but then one day when she went to school and she came back, the girl was no longer there, but her stuff was. Apparently, this teenage girl was a hitchhiker, and John Chesson had picked her up. He was known to pick up hitchhikers. The daughter was able to take the detective to where he actually picked up this teenage hitchhiker, and it was in the exact same location where Carol had last made a phone call to her grandma. Whoa. It was at a payphone. That's where he picked her up from. Now, when this teenage Whoa. girl suddenly was no longer in their house anymore, his daughter didn't want to like press the issue because he was abusive and very mean. Mm. And then he died in prison in 2016 and they never really got the truth out of him. I'm sorry, but the entire situation where he decided to suddenly take his two sons hunting for the very first time, he brings them to the exact location where a body would be and he points his two sons, go to that area, for whatever reason, where they find the body, it really sounds like he did it. And what a, if he did, what an asshole for making his two young children go find a body. But at this point, this was a, a, a more recent computerized image of her, by the way, before she was identified. But Carol's murder has gone unsolved. Chesson mm. may have been her killer, but also he may not have been. Could have just been crazy coincidence. And so they are still asking for help from the public. If you have any information about this case, do please call them. You can call them at 318-965-3418. You can report your information anonymously. You don't have to say who you are. You just have to say what you know. That is a crazy story.
Late at night in Las Lunas, a lady arrives at a homeowner's door, appearing extremely scared. She rings the doorbell and asks the homeowner for a phone call. The situation is perplexing, as it's hard to determine if she genuinely needs help or if there's some kind of trap or deception involved. Hell no. In such uncertain circumstances, it's essential to prioritize personal safety and caution mm -hmm. while considering how to assist the lady. It might be best to contact the authorities to ensure both her safety and the homeowner's well-being. Facts. Police on the line, boy. I'm sorry. Can you So obviously Buddy went to the door or something. Hello? Hello? Oh, he did. Can I help you? Can I keep the bar please? What? The mommy blogger that killed her own child. This is like the Gypsy Rose case with an even more devastating ending. Lacey Spears said that she always wanted to be a mom and it was like a dream come true when her son Garnett was born. But only days after Garnett was born, his mother Lacey was taking him to the ER saying that he was very sick and wasn't eating. And at only a few months old, at his mother's request, Garnett had a feeding tube put in and his throat closed so he wouldn't be able to throw up. Remember that for later because it'll what? be important. Garnett was a very sick child and his mother Lacey would document it all on her blog and her social media accounts. But in reality, Lacey was the sick one. Garnett mm. was perfectly healthy. Lacey was purposefully making her child sick for sympathy, attention, and online clout. No. Like many times before, in January of 2014, Lacey took her son, Garnett, to the ER, this time saying that he was experiencing seizures. After multiple tests, the nurses and doctors didn't see any seizure activity happening with Garnett, so they were getting ready to discharge him from the hospital. Within 10 minutes of the nurses and doctors leaving Garnett's hospital room, Garnett went from being a perfectly healthy five-year-old boy to being brain dead and then passing away with no medical explanation why. What? Hospital staff was super suspicious, so they reported it to the police. Garnett had passed away from a lethal amount of sodium found in his system with no explanation on how it got there. An investigation started right away and really quickly, there was a lot of suspicious stuff that started being uncovered about his mom. They got a search warrant for their home and where all of Garnett's medical supplies was, like all of his medicine, his feeding tube, his feeding bags, there was a container of sea salt. And a friend of Lacey's told the police that like immediately after Garnett passed away in the hospital, Lacey was texting her being like, yo, go into my house and throw out all of Garnett's feeding tubes and feeding bags, but don't tell anyone why. So suspicious, I can't believe she didn't know that she was gonna get caught. So obviously they tested the feeding bags that were in the home and in the trash, and they all contained a large amount of salt in them. And then a bomb dropped. There was security footage that Lacey didn't know about from Garnett's hospital room. Oh. Parts of it's online. I don't feel comfortable showing it, but you can find it online if you want. But it shows five-year-old Garnett sitting in his hospital bed, looking super healthy, bouncing around on his bed. And then when the doctors and nurses leave the room, shows his mother take the feeding tube, take Garnett out of the bed, who's super healthy, take him into the bathroom. And then Garnett leaves the bathroom, an extremely sick child in a lot of pain and trying to throw up. But Garnett wow. was unable to throw up the poison that his mother had just given him because she had had his throat closed when he was only a newborn. Lacey what? was found guilty and sentenced to 25 years to life in prison, and to this day, she's never admitted what she did or shown any remorse for what she did and the five years of torture and pain that she did to her child. Man, what? In 1997, a 14-year-old girl had her life tragically cut short when a group of teenage bullies assaulted her to death. Her name was Rena Verk, and she is the subject of the new true crime series stuff, Under the Bridge wow. out on Hulu. This is her story. Born in British Columbia, Canada, Rena was the daughter of immigrants from India. She grew up in the Victoria area where she attended school and lived with her family. Rena's life was marked by the typical joys of adolescence, but she also faced a lot of bullying and she was frequently left out of social activities. 
activities. On November 14, 1997, Rena was finally invited to a party by a group of classmates. The party started off behind the school, but the police broke it up, so they relocated to Craig Flower Bridge. It was there that Rena was subjected to an assault that ultimately led to her death. Her body Whoa. was recovered in a nearby waterway several days later, sending shockwaves through the community and sparking national outrage. The trials of her assailants drew widespread media attention and prompted soul-searching about the prevalence and consequences of bullying and youth violence. Her yeah. story became a rallying cry for greater awareness and action to prevent similar tragedies from occurring in the future. Although Rena's life was cut short at the age of 14, her legacy endures as a powerful reminder of the importance of compassion, empathy, Absolutely. and solidarity in the face of adversity. If you're curious about the underlying causes of bullying, I'd like to recommend to you the book Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman. We have a guide to emotional intelligence in our short form library. Check it out. Link in bio. Let us know what you think. That bullying is trash. Thanks to a deathbed confession, a nearly 24-year-old cold case was closed this week when the bodies of a missing girl and her mother were found. 10-year-old Natasha Alex Carter and her mother Susan disappeared from their home in Beckley, West Virginia in August 2000. But at first, police initially reported that Alex may have been abducted by her mother. In a press release from December 2021 about the case, the FBI Pittsburgh said, quote, at the time of their disappearance, Susan Carter and Alex's father were having a custody dispute, and Alex moved in with her mother and mother's new husband, which it's not confirmed that it was actually her mother's new husband, but they moved in, and then not long after that, Susan and Alex disappeared. But while it was initially suspected as a parental abduction by Susan, after the two remained missing, an investigation into other possibilities ensued, but unfortunately, the case went cold. In 2021, mm. the FBI reopened the cold case and started looking into the man Susan and Alex were living with, Larry Webb. Searches of his home were done in 2022 and 2023, and they found a bullet embedded in the wall of what was Alex's bedroom. What? The bullet was tested for DNA, and it confirmed that blood on it belonged to Alex. In October 2023, Larry Webb was indicted on first-degree murder charges for Alex's death, despite Alex and Susan's bodies never being found. Mm. Due to his deteriorating health, though, Webb was not arrested until April 12, 2024, but since then he was being held without bond. On Monday, he had a medical episode, after which in a, quote, come to Jesus moment on his deathbed, he confessed to authorities what he had done. Webb claimed that on August 8, 2000, he had gotten into an argument with Susan over money. He said he was missing some cash and believed that she had taken it and spent mm. it. The argument escalated and he shot her, and then he ended up shooting Alex so there would be no witnesses. What? Webb then wrapped their bodies in bed linens and placed them in the basement that night. Over the next two nights, he dug a shallow grave in the woods on his property, eventually burying them in his clothes and then walking free for the next 20 years. Whoa. On April 22nd, 2024, Larry Webb died at Mount Olive Correctional Complex, and six hours later, Susan and Alex's remains were found at his property in Beckley. Wow. Unfortunately, now that Webb is dead, he cannot be charged in connection to their deaths. At least now they have been found and can be properly laid to rest. Alex's father, Rick Lafferty, said after the discovery, quote, it's kind of a sad day, but also a happy day because I can bring my baby home. Mm. Rest in peace, Alex and Susan. That was this year stuff. The world is definitely not ready to hear this, but there is no real picture of the earth. What do you mean? Every picture that's been released NASA. that's on Google and or released from NASA is a 3D render. There's only two pictures the earth claims to have in its vault. Let yeah. me show you them right now. You're telling me that my iPhone 3G wallpaper isn't real? That's the blue marble. <laughs> the blue marble, as known from popular media and your iPhone 3, this <laughs> claims to be an actual photo of the Earth from space. It's claiming that? You want me to show you the other one? The other one's hilarious. This is the real one, apparently. What? It's called the pale blue dot. Who took that? <laughs> I've taken They're better pictures my whenever my chat. phone is in my pocket accidentally, <laughs> yeah. bro. That's what this looks like. Why do all these these pictures look so fake. If you go through Google, there's not a single one that looks even remotely real. Don't wow. we have pictures of other planets? I don't think you're ready for that Saturn. conversation, bro. Saturn picture. Okay, that is deep. <laughs> this is made of the really, PS2. You're really not ready for that conversation, bro. <laughs> wow. This actor exposes how Hollywood really is. Listen closely. With actors, you're in a vulnerable situation. You know, you're in a vulnerable place. You're trying to get a job, and there's people who who could use that power to abuse it. I was a young actor. Yeah, I was uh, 
asked to go to a, a hotel room of a, of a director. It was a famous director. And um, I didn't think anything weird by it because it never thing had ever happened to me. And so I went um, <clears throat> and he was in his robe. I still didn't think it was weird. Well, he probably just came out of the what? shower or whatever. And then he asked me to do, um, you know, uh, to do the scene and then crawl on my belly around it. And it, it got to a oh, weird yeah. place. I remember that, that humiliation and I didn't tell anybody. The agents are creeps too. You know, and like, and then the, you know, trying to get um, a job and, the, you know, the casting directors can be, you know, and the people who are um, uh, the producers, the directors. I mean, it's just, it's rampant in the industry. Mm. There's not one actress who doesn't have a story. Just before I was really famous. And the next thing I know, I'm in a room with this guy. He's in a chair. And, you know, he's in a row, he's in a, uh, comes out in a bathrobe and sits in this chair. And the next thing you know, I'm like, he's asking me to like crawl on the ground and then to crawl toward him. And I just like, I, I just, it was just this, this. If you want to be in the entertainment industry, be careful and speak out. That's a fact for sure. Have you heard the crazy conspiracy theory that celebrities get mentally frozen at the age that they got famous? These examples will explain a lot. Taylor Swift has confirmed that she is a victim of this conspiracy theory. You know, there's this thing people say about celebrities that they're frozen at the age they got famous. And that's kind of what happened to me. Her pathological people pleasing is definitely a quality of an agreeable, shy teenage girl. The arrested development of celebrities may offer an explanation as to why Leonardo DiCaprio only goes for women under 25. As he got wow. worldwide famous in 1996 when he was 22. His type back then was ingenue, stereotypical supermodels who were his age. And they grew out of that, but he never did. Don't turn 25, baby, you're too sexy. An extreme example could be Michael Jackson, who got famous when he started performing at the age five. And without getting into the dark side to respect everyone involved, he did admit he bought the Neverland Ranch to be a sanctuary for kids to have a perfect childhood experience that he never got to have because of fame. And maybe he saw himself in those kids. I think there's more to the eternally 12 birthday cake Mariah Carey always has. Selena Gomez got worldwide famous when she was a preteen. Maybe that could explain why she's addicted to middle school drama. Before I tell you the craziest example, for a deeper dive in this theory with these examples and more examples, go check out the video version on YouTube and the audio version for my podcast. The craziest example of this that got me really thinking about this this week is when Miranda Cosgrove said she has never drinking before because she's never had a reason to. What a strange thing to say. And she doesn't smoke and will only swear a little bit, but she thinks it's like endearing, like when it's funny, when a little kid swears and everyone laughs. And then I got to thinking, oh my God, she's frozen at five years old, Drake and mm. Josh. She's frozen at Megan. That's an interesting theory though, for sure. Something really f***ing strange is happening in Hollywood right now. A few months ago, I made a video talking about how Simon Cowell's reappearance was quite strange and about how many people truly believe that the man who returned was not what? Simon Cowell. Similarly, in recent events, people are claiming that the person in this video is not Britney Spears. In fact, if you pause the video on the frame right before her hand passes by her face, you can clearly see that there's a filter being placed on Britney Spears' face and it goes away for only a split moment and the most recent event of all jamie fox was unseen or heard from for quite some time only to reappear in this video apologizing to his fans claiming that he had a mysterious medical emergency which he would not identify i went to hell and back and my road to recovery uh, had some potholes as well and people are already saying that this person who returned is not jamie fox i ain't no conspiracist that ain't jamie i am merely sharing public opinion what do you guys think is going on let me know in the comments that stuff is wild though celebrities using babies to stay young One of oprah's favorites she says it's a miracle fountain of youth and her magic wrinkle cure so I'm gonna put a little on your hand. I'd do that, Oprah did. Yeah, Oprah yeah. did it. All right, so here, we're gonna rub it right in. How come it's red? I sh I'll show you in a sec, Steve. So this is made from growth hormones of human Look, horses. the wrinkles has just disappeared. <laughs> I can't even ball my hand up. But so, so it's made from human foreskin. What? <laughs> what? I'm sorry, no Steve. Boyfriend have been in a good relationship for quite a moment now. A yeah. Few years. Yeah, for uh, uh, seven years. Now he's a, he's an early thirty, and you're a late fifty. Yeah. But somehow you both look the same age there. Mm. 
I mean, you know, th there's something <laughs> to be said for being with a younger man. They, he, he, I, I, I suck uh, baby's blood. <laughs> And what? put it on my face. Well, it's this this way in which um, one forces uh, through microneedling. Uh, it's like a little roller with these. Some of you, I, mean, I think many of you know it. And it pushes through the skin and ruptures the collagen, and then boosts it. You look like a burn victim for a day, but then it's it, but then it pushes. The what are you pushing into the skin, Sarah? Ser well, you push in whatever the facialist would like to insert into your pores. But what is it? It is an extraction from a um, a a, um, a piece of skin uh, that came from. A young person. A young person. Whoa. Um, far, far away, and they somehow figured out how to extract its foreskin from a Korean baby. Well, wow. I leave the plasma on my skin for a day and then wash it off the next day. It gives me the most amazing smooth glow. I'm going to continue to do this forever. It's my preferred anti aging method. This is crazy. heard about what happened recently with the actor from friends yeah bro so matthew perry that's the guy's name rest in peace you know what i'm saying he passed away from drowning in his, in his jacuzzi so everybody Whoa. says like what happened to him is very odd and strange because he took a picture of him in the jacuzzi and the night. that night it happened you saw stuff he was posting before that yes it was that's what i'm about to get like into about the batman shit. Bro, yeah. he was posting mad shit about batman but his last video was somebody throwing down three cranberries on a table there was a band called the cranberries their lead singer passed away from drowning and people said that he wrote a book and like at the end of his book he said if he ever threw out the bat symbol he's in trouble he's telling us i don't know if he was telling us something said it's like a hollywood ritual or whatever and he's like the sacrifice yeah probably like you know how people been saying doja cat is like a Illuminati because she'd be dressed like the devil on some weird I think she did a video where you know the friend's couch yeah. she sat on the friend's couch dressed like the devil I'm telling you buddy right. wow the bat signal I'm telling y'all they always hide the truth in plain sight sure is make a deal with me kid you can have the car and everything that goes along with Freemason sign ring, and wait a minute, that's obviously the devil. Right. That was a crazy commercial. I didn't know that a lot of kids were not allowed to watch SpongeBob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. they were kids, but there is some dark humor in it. Did we ever talk about the Mr. Krabs surveillance theory? No. That? What is that? There, there's a theory how Mr. Krabs, you know how he loves money. Yeah. He would do anything for money, right? Yeah. Because in one episode, he has a room. And Squidward and Spongebob, they accidentally find it. What? And in the room, there's a whole bunch of like screens and they're surveilling everybody. And then one of them is like in Sandy's house while she's brushing her teeth and shit. Oh. So mm -hmm. theory goes that Mr. Krabs, since he loves money, okay. he took money to surveil everybody in Bikini Bottom and kind of sell them out to whoever is like studying them yeah. or mm -hmm. who even knows for what reason. Damn. Wow, that's crazy. SpongeBob. Marlon Wayans exposes one of their Illuminati agendas. I instead of buying like watches or you know, cars I own two. I have a Tesla and I have an old Range Rover. I'm not a flossy dude. I have one. The only reason why I got two cars is 
Range Rover was the first car I bought when I made money. Yeah, yeah. And it reminds me of that youth of, of, of trying to hunger. Yeah, and get wanting that want that mm-hmm. thing. That one and thing. I realized once I had that thing, that thing means nothing. Yeah. And then I lease my other car. I, it, I, it, those mm. things mean nothing. These things of that you think are valuable, money, watches, they mean nothing. Right. Happy costs nothing. Right. Success is what you work toward every day. There is no mountain, no top of the mountain. You just keep climbing. It's- this island has one of the most disturbing histories in America, and no one really knows the full truth behind it. So like I said before, this island was owned by multi-millionaire Francis Sheldon, pictured right here. And Francis and a number of other local men from Michigan, including this guy, Gerald S. Richards, ran a boys camp on the island. They would fly kids to the island on this airstrip, kids from the YMCA and other schools and communities in the area. And both the children and the parents of the children who attended this boys camp were told that this was an island of fun where kids could relax. They had big brothers there. It was going to be totally safe. And this camp ran on this island for a period of years. Then one day, some of the kids who attended the camp began to tell their parents that the counselors or the teachers, the adults that were there on the island, had behaved with them in very, very inappropriate ways. They began telling their friends and parents that they were taken into these cabins pictured here on the island. They were assaulted. They Mm. were told to remove all of their clothing and that there were cameras all over the place. Well, it turns out that this guy, the multi-millionaire with political and business connections in the area, Francis Sheldon, was running a massive CP ring. And they had been abusing the children on this island under the guise of bringing them to a boys camp for years, recording all of it, selling it across the world. And some of the more affluent clients of their business were even allowed to take trips to the island themselves to see some of these young boys. Now, this story bears an obvious resemblance to the story of Jeffrey Epstein, but there are some very, very strange things that are happening here that nobody knows about, and the government still refuses to talk about to this day. Wow. So let's talk about this guy, Gerald S. Richards. He was a gym teacher at a local Catholic school who went down for the crimes, and he was heavily involved with every aspect of this business, if you know what I mean. Well, it seems like through his political and business connections, Francis Sheldon was actually tipped off that he was about to be arrested and raided and charged with these horrific crimes. So Francis, before he could be brought to justice for these crimes, he actually fled the country in a personal plane. He then moved to France, got remarried, and died in Amsterdam, and never had to pay for any of the crimes that were committed. Wow. But it's when we start talking about the murders that this story really starts to blow my mind. So take a good look at this guy, Chris Bush. This is Christopher Bush's father, Harold Lee Bush. Now, he was an executive with General Motors, and the family was obviously extremely wealthy. They were politically connected, and they were very connected to every business in the area. These guys had a lot of power. But back to Christopher Bush. This guy had assaulted a number of children. He'd been let out of prison, let out of jail in a very, very suspicious way, multiple times, put on bail for serious offenses. And he was a alleged associate of the crime ring that was happening on North Fox Island. Mm. Meaning that, like I said earlier, he was one of those people who could afford to actually fly out to the island to do things himself. I'm out of time. Follow for part three. This is where it gets juicy. This stuff is crazy, bro. For parents to just let their kids go somewhere unattended without their supervision, I think that's crazy nowadays, bro. I'm sorry. Like, no. Ain't no way. You got to be there. You, like, man, that stuff is crazy, man. Hell no. Nah. The year 2024 is considered the worst year in history in terms of weather and economic crisis as it is the time, and the predictions from a mysterious time traveler about the weird upcoming events in 2024 make everything even crazier. Save this and come back if they prove to be true. On April 9th, ocean waters turn black for a week, and many unknown sea creatures wash up on shore. On May 27th, the second American Civil War begins as Texas secedes from the country, followed by other states. It will eventually lead to an all-out war with involvement from other countries and nuclear weapons. On August 8th, massive versions of over 40 mysterious species are discovered in a secret part 
of the Amazon rainforest. These include six-foot butterflies, three-foot long ants, five-foot spiders, 200-foot snakes, and tree-sized cats. Stop. On September 19th, the first Stop. ever Category 6 hurricane occurs on the U.S. East Coast. It makes landfall in Florida as a Category 5 before returning to the ocean, strengthening, and slamming into South Carolina as a Category 6. On October 25th, a very famous musician comes out and reveals that he had faked his death. Everyone Man. will know who he is. He is known as a legend of his time and will be even more famous than Taylor Swift. This stuff is craziness, man. Now, if I showed you this picture of this man, you probably wouldn't know who he was at face value. But if I showed you the brand that he started, you definitely would know who he was. This is Rene Lagaste. There's a lot of speculation online about his racial identity and whether or not he was black. Now, his father, jean Jules Lecaste, was a very wealthy French business owner. His son was a very talented French tennis player known as the Crocodile. And that's essentially mm. where they got the logo for the brand from. It was based on his tenacity on the tennis court. But when you look up his mother, you don't find anything. There's a lot of speculation on a lot of different places that his mother was either of Jamaican or North African descent. But when you do a little digging, Google searches, you'll find out that her name was Jeanne-Marie Magdalene Le Roulette. And according to Lacasse, the website, the family genealogy on her side traces back to the 1700s in France. But what do you think? This is him when he was younger. And this is him in the 90s when he was substantially older. I do know some black people that look like this, but I do know some Arab people that look like this as well. <laughs> Working for this man was literally a death sentence for a lot of Americans. This is John Rockefeller, one of the richest men in America. And I'm not even kidding, a lot of people died because of him. But anytime something would go wrong and people would start to protest, he would call one man. His name was Ivy Lee. He was a publicist, also a public relations expert, and he's considered the inventor of modern day public relations and the press release. He was so good at writing press releases that newspapers didn't catch on and they thought that they were articles and they would just run them right like normal articles, mm. essentially giving free advertisement to whoever he was working for. The Rockefellers love this man. John Rockefeller had the same relationship with the media that I have with the police. If you don't talk to them, they might leave you alone. Ivy Lee came along and was like, that's stupid. You need to talk to the media. After two women and 11 children died, Ivy Lee made it all go away. Americans hated the Rockefellers with a passion and they would always have protests against them. The Rockefellers were greedy as hell. They would open mines in the most remote places and build houses there. So essentially the workforce that lived there also had to pay them rent, which they would wow. dock from their paycheck. They would hire Whoa. several groups of workers that didn't speak the same language and they would split them up so they couldn't communicate with each other and they couldn't communicate with union organizers either. And then wow. they would just end people's lives. They would call in their own private military the what? National Guard of whatever state they were in, to the point where a president had to get involved in calling the army because of what are you even doing and why do you have your own private army to end people's lives? This guy's job was to strictly make them look human. And he basically did. And he essentially changed how Americans saw the Rockefellers. And in 1914, the Rockefellers called in their private military to stop people from striking in Colorado. And they ended up ending the lives of a lot of people and just leaving them there to the point where trains that were passing by saw fields full of decomposing bodies. Whoa. This guy came in and was like, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to go there and listen to what they are complaining about to begin with. So he sponsored a plaque to be unveiled and he got one of the widows of one of the men that was unalived by his private army to unveil it. He didn't say anything to the people or do anything to make their situations better. He just stayed there and listened. Outside of this man, the only thing that saved John Rockefeller from that was the fact that it was World War I. Mm. Ivy Lee knew that, and he told the Rockefellers that, hey, if you want Americans to love you, you're going to have to do your big one. So the Rockefellers all got their money together, and they ended up funding the construction of Rockefeller Center. Now, of course, this was one of their big things, and this happened about 15 years after what happened in Colorado. They set up charitable trusts and educational trusts in the meantime. And that was mostly because of this man basically telling them like, hey, if you want to repair your image, you're going to have to give up some money. But this man's tactics are still used today. Basically, hey, if the public doesn't like something, say it in a way that will get them to fall in line and make them like it. Just like when people say TikTok is a national security risk when they don't do anything different from what other apps are already doing. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh -wee. Did this man get stuck in the past? In 1995, Mike Markham set out to create a time machine. 
His idea was to use compact lasers to reduce the air pressure going in either pole direction. Mike was a recluse and worked tirelessly on his invention. On one occasion, he even caused a citywide blackout. Whoa. However, it might have benefited him as he garnered some attention and received anonymous donations to help fund his invention. When asked about what he would bring if he could time travel, he simply replied, my cell phone. However, in 1997, Mike and his work mysteriously disappeared without a trace. Mm. Soon afterwards, a news story was uncovered from the 1930s, claiming that an unrecognizable man was found crushed in a metal tube on a California beach. And the only thing found with the body was a cell phone from the 1990s. So. What? Whoa. This is known as the most convincing case of time travel in the whole of history. Sergei Ponomarenko was a guy who literally appeared out of nowhere in Kiev in 2006. So he arrived wearing really outdated clothes and had a camera that looked very old. He claimed that he was walking down the street with his girlfriend when a blinding light appeared and transported him to 2006. After conducting an investigation, the police told him that he had to show some kind of proof that he was from that era. He then suggested they look at the photos in his camera. There was an undeveloped film in the device. When they developed it, it revealed photos of a girl that seemed to date back to the 1950s in Kiev. So, wow. there are two options. Either this guy had a camera from the 1950s at 25 years old, and he knew the contents of the undeveloped photos. There were also photos of him on the device. So they asked, okay, who is this girl in the pictures? He replied, that's my girlfriend. They then asked for her name to look her up, but it was at that moment that the police were stunned. He literally... Here we go with this. Here we go with this shit. This man says he's traveled back in time to save our world, and he's come with proof. This dude and this fool. November 2nd of the year 2000, a time traveler started posting on a time travel forum claiming he was a soldier sent back in time from the year 2036 to 1975. He needed to retrieve parts from an IBM 5100 computer system as this was essential to debug and fix his computer systems in his time that ran time travel technology. This tastes like your mom booty. So good. He went by the name of John Teeter. Now you may think this is all fake and just word of mouth from John, but he came with proof. Man, get to the story. But he also came with a warning that three billion of us would not be living soon and that we had catastrophic events that would occur. Oh, and he explained it all in detail. Now the first time John reached out was actually a fax sent to a radio host named Art Bell on July 28th, 1998. See, Art Bell was running a radio segment where he wanted to get calls in from time travelers. Most people who called in were just joking, but this fax that he got seemed a little too on the serious side. I had the facts when I heard other time travelers calling in from any time past the year 2500 AD. Please let me explain. Time travel was invented in 2034. Offshoots of certain successful fusion reactor research allow scientists at CERN to produce the world's first contained singularity engine. Sir. The basic design involves rotating singularities inside a magnetic field. By altering the speed and direction of rotation, you can travel both forward and backwards in time. Time travel could be understood in the terms of connected lines. When you go back in time, you travel to your original timeline. When you turn your singularity engine off, a new timeline is created due to the fact that you and your time machine are now there. In other words, a new universe is created and immediately throw the engine into forward without turning it off. Some interesting outcomes of this are 1. You meet yourself. I've done it often and even taken the yoga version of myself along for a few rides before returning myself to the new timeline and going back to mine. 2. You can alter history in the new universe that you have created. Most of the time the changes are subtle, sometimes I'll notice car models that don't exist or books that come out late. The oldest one was a skyscraper that wasn't built in a near favorite store of mine in New York. Interestingly, when you travel in time, you must compensate for the orbit of the Earth. Since the machine doesn't move, you have to adjust the engine so you remain on the planet when you turn it off. Unfortunately, it is also discovered that anyone going forward in time from the year 2036 hit a brick wall in the year 2564. Everyone who has been there has reported that nothing exists. When the machine is turned off, you find yourself surrounded by blackness and silence. Now most time travelers are trying to find out where the line went bad by going into the past, creating a new universe, and proceeding forward to see if the same thing results in 2564. It appears that the line went bad around the year 2000. I'm here now. I'm in this time. 
please pray that we discover the reason why there is no apparent future after 2536. Mm. Our bell was very surprised and wanted to know more, but didn't hear back that day until a second fax came in days later. Dear Mr. Bell, I'm glad you're back. I faxed this information to you the day before you left the air. I have been on this world since April of this year and I plan to leave soon. Typically, time travelers do not purposely affect the world lines they visit. However, this mission is unusually long and I've grown attached to some of the people that I've met here. Anyways, for my own reason, I've decided to help this world line by sharing information about the future with a few people in the hope that it will help their future. I believe you could change your future by creating one. I realize my claims are difficult to accept, so I will send the following once I know you have received this fax. A few pages from the operations manual of my time machine, and a few colored photographs of my vehicle. If you wish to contact me, I will be happy to share with you the nature of time. Please send a return package to... Our bell never heard back again from this guy. But two years later, on November 2nd, in the year 2000, someone using the handle time travel underscore zero would arrive on the internet, explaining the details of how his time machine worked. And later he'd pop up on post to post Art Bell's time travel forum. And the world would learn about John Teeter. Yeah, baby, I like it like that. Woo. Mm -mm -mm. Now, people were like, yo, I don't believe you. Do you have proof? And he actually showed a picture of his time machine and explained how it worked. But just a warning, it's a bunch of nerd mumbo jumbo. That actually makes a lot of sense if you know what scientists say about time travel. My time machine is a stationary mass temporal displacement unit manufactured by General Electric. The unit is powered by two top spin dual positive singularities that produce a standard offset Tipler sinusoid. Peter said his time machine contained dual micro singularities, an electron injection manifold, a cooling and x-ray venting system, gravity sensors, four main CCM clocks, and three main computer units. All of this was housed in a 1976 Chevrolet Corvette convertible. Okay, cool. He explained how the time machine worked and told you about the parts. But what was his warning of our future? Teeter claimed that the American Civil War would begin in 2008, leading to a nuclear exchange in 2015 that would erase 3 billion people. He claimed that after this, Omaha Nebraska would become the U.S.'s new capital and that the U.S. would create time travel in the 2030s because of this. He said people who survived the war would become closer together. Life would be centered around community and family. Ooh, this is special sauce. Well, that time so passed good, already. Back to the story. He said an average day in 2036 is like an average day on a farm. I live in a community made up of tree houses on a large river in Florida. Most of our neighbors make a living off the sea or in moving cargo by boat. Before he left, Teeter left one message for us in 2001. Perhaps I should let you in on a little secret. No one likes you in the future. This time period is looked at as being full of lazy, self-centered, civically ignorant mm. sheep. Now did any of his predictions come true or was it just all a hoax? Because clearly me and you were still alive. There was right. never a civil war in 2008, never a nuclear war in 2015. He did say the future of entertainment would be decentralized and anybody could make entertainment for you. We watch a lot of videos on social media now and people have the freedom to post it whenever they want. So he was right about that. Oh, and he also said that there would be a mad cow disease breakout which did happen in the early 2000s. He did say the Olympic Games would be canceled in 2004. That never happened. Mm -mm -mm. Stephen Hawking said that whatever entered a black hole would disappear. John Teeter said that that wasn't true. A while later, Stephen Hawking took back that initial hypothesis and changed his mind, agreeing with what John said. Now look, I know many people believe this was all one big hoax. Just like this big burrito. A lot of them suspected a lawyer out in Florida who was very intelligent of writing and faking the John Teeter emails as a big joke. However, there's enough of John Teeter's evidence that some people believe that he actually did come back. He actually did save our timeline and changed our future from destruction. But let me know what you think. And make sure you follow because my next story is insane. A lot of stuff was wrong, so I don't know. Like, all right, so that was another TikTok conspiracy theory video. It was a lot of heavy stuff in that one, a lot of true crime stuff, a lot of time travel, a lot of Illuminati type stuff, man. The time travel stuff, I just, I just don't believe in that. Y'all, let me know in the comments what y'all think about the whole time travel thing. For me, I just don't see it. But if you made it to the end of this one, man, drop real one for real in the comments. And also, I got a TikTok playlist. If you into this, it's available for you to check it out, man. So till next time, self-love and positivity. Fire Squad, I got you. You know it.